Every year, teachers complain en masse that children's education is being limited by successive governments' obsessions with exam results. Up to now, their complaints have largely been ignored, but they suddenly have an unlikely new champion in Amanda Spielman, the new chief inspector of schools and head of Ofsted, the education regulator. Now, Mrs Spielman, who was a controversial choice for the role because she's never been a teacher, is hardly a raving lefty. She had a career in the city of London before heading a chain of academies for the organisation ARC. But in her first interview since taking on the role, she is pretty damning. She says, the real substance of education is getting lost in our schools. She complains that more and more time in many schools is spent just training kids to pass exams and that this teaching to the test mentality has even spread to primary schools. According to Ms Spielman, this means that the more creative subjects like art, music, humanities and drama are being ignored, which is ironic given that Britain is particularly successful in the creative industries. Maybe, just maybe, Someone is finally listening to the teachers. Well, I like the sound of, um, is it Mrs Spielman? Or Ms Spielman yes. very, very much, because I think, obviously, she's right. And we want to, education isn't just so that children pass exams to, start, to set levels, but that is what our state schools have to do, and that's what they're inspected to do. And when children, uh, students get to A level, they have to, you know, have their A's and their A stars in order to get into the universities that have made them these offers. So, unless you change the entire system where it's not a results-based education system, mm. we are going to get a sort of sausage factory process of education. And I was lucky enough to go to school where you may not agree, where we had, you know, plays in ancient Greek, and we had early morning drills at seven o'clock and we had British Bulldog at break and we had, you know, we had scripture plays as well. And so, you know, oh. we had an incredible range of activities as well as lots of beating and starvation as well, <laughs> um, which of course is part of the British educational system in the private sector. So, you know, you can't have it all, sadly. I wish we could. Now, what is interesting about her is, I mean, she's quite something she says, uh, she says, yes, education does have to prepare young people to succeed in life, which we all agree, mm -hmm. and that that does involve exams, and make their contribution, as she says, in the labour market. But to reduce education down to that kind of functional level yeah. is rather wretched. Yeah. And I, I, it's, I, it's, I think it's just really, given, the, given there was so much controversy over her appointment, it's quite interesting mm. to see what she's saying, because I mean, a lot of teachers will take heart But if she this. was education secretary, let's say, rather than... What is she? Chairman she's of Offset. Off. Off. So what could she actually functionally do to make sure that the education system under her watch m created a bra better, broader um, education at the end of the day? Well, you, I mean, we've gone to a table mentality, haven't we? Mm. You've all got to get yeah. into, you've all got to get hung up the table. So schools, I mean, she says, you know, mm. you find, you suddenly find schools are doing GCSE stuff a year earlier right. to keep so that they learn yes. over three years so they get more chance of passing. So boring okay, for children. That's it. Yeah. Can I just come in here? Yeah. Obviously you, you probably know I'm going to disagree with you and I'll do this with Ms. <laughs> because, Nothing new there. Because, <laughs> you know, there's been much criticism in this report of the tougher GCSE exams this year. You know in my view maybe they need to be tougher because Britain now languishes at number 19 the OECD global scale of literacy and numeracy. We're 19 on literacy and we're 21 on numeracy. We're two from the bottom on numeracy. So whatever they're preparing them for in these exams, it's, it's not actually teaching them to read and write properly. I just, I, you know, there was a CBI report recently that said that 33% of employers are taking graduates on and, and they're, they're dissatisfied with their literacy, 29 dissatisfied with their numeracy. They're saying these kids are coming, their egos have to be massaged all the time because they've spent all their time at school being told how fantastic they are and how wonderful. And, and their attitude and aptitude for work is not good. So whatever is happening to our kids in school, I think we're letting them down because they're leaving school with poor literacy and numeracy skills and they're leaving university no, with the same. Then you're making her point. 
So her point no, is that so you are. She's saying the GCSE exam shouldn't be so hard. No, but I'm the saying point maybe it should is be harder. The system isn't working, is it? So the actually, maybe we working. need to come up with a different way of. It's not saying that the kids don't need to learn numeracy and literacy. Of course they do. But maybe we need to come up well, with a different way of teaching them. It's, it. it's the basics. That, that's that's the, the point. basics. It is the basics. But what she is saying and what I agree yeah, with is, and, you, and you, I know from the experience of my, my my kids who did go to state schools and went to quite good state schools. And yeah, what was it? What was interesting? You know, my kids went to state schools. But what was interesting was when you ask them what they remember, they remember being in the play or they remember yeah. doing yes. this. They don't actually remember the learning. And, that's, and what she's arguing, it seems yeah. to me, is let's it's get the breadth back. And actually, if you constantly have league tables and constantly say you've got to get into this group in the league tables... In the end, schools will do what they're doing, which is let's let's get to make sure they get this exam and this exam and this exam. But let's forget about the breadth of education. Well, get, well, get the breadth back, but also teach them the basics. Teach them what they're going to be able to use in the outside world. You know, I had to look up what humanities subjects are because in the secondary school that I went to, we didn't do humanities. We just we learned to read and write and did a bit of history. Um, and the humanities subject are philosophy, anthropology, the classics. Around that area, they're subjects for university. Surely, they're not. They're not necessarily for school. I mean, art and Why drama, not? yeah. And one of the things Why she not? said was, headmasters. You can't read classics at university unless you've done a bit of Latin and Greek yes, beforehand to get yes. in order to level. get to. Yeah. It's, uh, it's actually the easiest way to get into certain universities. But also, yeah, that's how I got it. They've got too many classics <laughs> lecturers and not enough people applying. But if you can't read and write properly, and if you can't communicate with no, people, you're talking, something is going. Yeah, you're you're it's just, confusing two issues yes. there. It's, it's, it's just not my... You've got to work in the outside world, and if you can't read and write properly, you can't okay, get... OK, we're quoting we reports. Let me, let me quote. An OECD report from, uh, this yeah. year found that UK teenagers are more anxious about tests than their counterparts in almost every other country well, in the world, including China and South Korea. 72%. We, historically, we teach, we've taught in a different way in this country, and we've tried to get breadth. And over, I suspect, over the, and it's not just the, this government, I think it was the previous, it was, yes. a, it was a, over a period sure. of time, we've said, let's measure everything, and we're losing the breadth because of it. And that's what teachers tell you.